Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord's name be praised. Praise the Lord. We're making heroes, isn't it? And I thank God that we come your way once again with the Super Champions Hour. As the book of Romans 8 says, in all this thing we are not just champions, but more than conquerors. That's the name Super Champions Hour. God wants you to walk in victory. It's not a matter of fighting, then trying to find whether you win or not. You're already a winner. We as Christians born again, we go into life challenges and battles as winners. We are not just mere champions. We are super champions. Satan is no match for us in Christ Jesus. Not in our own strength, but in Christ Jesus. He knows, he knows, he fears the name like of Jesus like something. And we don't come in our name. We come in the name of the Lord Jesus. And this being streamed from the Holy Ghost Cathedral of our international headquarters. We still are on the theme, Yahweh, Jehovah God. They all are not like him. As of chapters 40 to chapter 46. And we are on the fourth section of this series. With a subtopic, Yahweh God through challenge to all other nations, gods. Yahweh God through challenge to all other nations, gods. You know that. I keep saying that everybody's God has a name. Whether as individuals or a family or a society, a nation, an ethnic group, a tribe, or a nation. The one who says your God may not be my God. The one I say is my God may not be your God. And we say that the God we are talking here is the one true God, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not just the God of Abraham. Abraham had different children. They were worshipping different gods. Other than what Father Abraham was worshipping. And Isaac also had Esau in addition to Jacob. And Esau's descendants that the Edomites. They also had many gods. They were seven. Not their ancestry, Isaac and Abraham's God. But as for the children of Jacob. Who worship the God, only one God of their father Isaac, who also worship the God, only one God, the God of their grandfather Abraham. So he called himself, he himself called himself, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, So shall be my name forever and from generation to generation. He told Moses. So that eliminates other people and the being an entity and deity as they call from him. He stands unique. He's the only creator. Elohim means creator. The creator God. To him, there's no other God beside him. No God formed before him. Because he has no beginning. And there was no one before him to create anything aside from him. And he has no end. So he said no other God can be formed after him. Because he has no end. For any God to appear. But in this case, he continued to throw challenge to all other nations, gods, in inverted commas. You can begrudge anybody in calling. You can call yourself your own God. You can call stones and trees and planets and stars as your God. You can call animals. You can call them, you can call spirit. You can call memories, dwarfs. You can call cutting powers as your God. He is not them. He tells us clearly he is not them. He is different. And that's what we are making. And he transcends all things. This thing is higher than his creation. He lives in a realm of his own. He's about the 10 dimensional world. The Bible says the whole heaven. There's the first and second, third heaven. The third heaven which it dwells. The Bible says the, the third heaven no, cannot contain. That is his throne. And the earth is full too. He can be fed in all his creation, but he is not his creation. He is distinct and higher. Yet he managed, he managed me, he can be felt everywhere. You can see his attribute in many things, in all creation. And if you don't take care, you think the creation is equal to God and God is equal to you. That's what some people do. No. That's pantheism, it is said. They are making mistakes because they find attributes of God in the animality. They say the mantis is the God. They find an attribute of God in the dove. They say the dove is God. They find an attribute of God 
in the tortoise, they say the tortoise is called the river, they say, and the sea, they say, the moon, the stars, then they say these things, and the wind, the thunder, and they even say that's that's the Thor, the god of thunder, the moon, moon god. No, it's not them. It can be felt in it, and you can find aspect of it. But that's why human beings, blacksmiths, carpenters, and ghost beings, they hew a statue overlaid it with gold or silver or copper, and they say, Here is my god, yes, my god, who I will worship. Just like the people in the time of Israel from the land of Egypt, Moses brought them out, and Moses was going to receive the Ten Commandments on the mount. That Aaron was weak as weak as a reed. And many of us are weak. Many of us religious leaders are weak. And especially in the church, many Christian leaders, they could be born again, but they are weak as they are. They, they are pressured by their congregation. People. That's a people pressure. And they give in to what the people want. No. If you are a servant of the Most High, you are a servant, you are a messenger. You do the bidding of him. He sent you. He is the master. You don't do the bidding. This is not a commercial concern, a commercial company where you say that yeah, in the interest of the uh, customers is paramount. No, the company is not yours. The Church of Jesus Christ is not yours. You do the bidding of the owner of the Church of Jesus Christ. That is not you. You are not the founder. You are used by him to pioneer a denomination of a church. You didn't die on the cross. Do you understand it? You don't do anything to please the consumer interest and seek a free church. You are off. You are serving another master, not the Lord Jesus Christ. You do the beating of that. That's why you see that people like uh, Azar, uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and people uh, over the yes, Elijah, and that they suffered. It's Peter and Paul, and not there's an Akila and Prisla. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They did the beating of their master. They were beaten. They were sown. You just read Hebrew 11. The Hall of Fame of Faith. You will see women, they stood. And they were prepared to be killed and their children to be killed because they believe in this cause. Who has the power to resurrect the dead and call things that be not as though they were. He threw challenge to all other nations. God. What did he say in Isaiah 43, 10 to 11? We keep repeating that. Because we can find it like in many places in Isaiah 40 to 46. You are my witness, he declares the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. The part of thing is that I am he. When he said, I am whom I am, all the word he used in Hebrew is Yahweh. Before me no God was for no will there be one after me. I even I, I am Yahweh. That's what in English is translated into capitals, capital L, capital O, and capital R, and capital T. The capital L and small O, R, D is from the word Adonai, master, controller, ruler. Yahweh means I am. And apart from me, there's no savior, he said. So we continue to challenge just all nations, all tribes, all languages, governments, clubs, society, and spirits to show forth their works of divinity before him shall wear. As a 41, 21 to 39. I say he challenged tribes, languages, government, clubs, society, and spirit to show forth their works of divinity. If they say they are God, they should show their works of divinity before him. Not hide in a corner. They should stand before him and show forth their works of divinity before him, the Lord. It reads, present your case, he said. Present your case says the Lord, set forth your argument like in a law court. Says Jacob's king, you see, he identified himself, that is Jacob's king. Tell us, you idols, what is going to happen. Tell us what the former things were, so that we may consider them and know their final outcome. Or declare to us the things to come. Tell us what the future holds, so we may know that you are God's. Do something, whether good or bad, <laughs> so that we will be dismayed and filled with fear. Frighten him, frighten him. Do things which are good. Do things that are bad. Do things where he will not stop you. Do it that he cannot do it and nobody else can do it so that everybody will know, including him, Yahweh, that you are God, challenges you so that they will be dismayed and filled with fear. A 
you are less than nothing, he says, and your works are utterly worthless. Whoever chooses you detestable. You see, when you follow these things, who claim to God and you claim to God, you yourself, you are a detestable being, he said. I didn't say, it. the God I'm following, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is saying to you, you can go and fight him and see whether you can stand him. I've stirred up one from the north and he comes. One from the rise is I will cause on my name. He treads on rulers as if they were mort, as if he were a porter treading the clay. Who told you of this from the beginning? You see, before he does things, he says it. It could be generations or even uh, hundreds of years or even millennia. So that we could know all beforehand. So we could say he was right. Don't let the things happen and you become like talking here, pundits and all these things, uh, making uh, forecasting, what kind of forecasting. They, then they say with a margin of error. When this God that we are talking about, Yahweh speaks, there's no margin of error. <laughs> there's no margin of error. You say you're a forecaster, you're a poster. Margin of error doesn't go with him. Margin of error is an error. You make the thing by even five. Then you say that, oh, we are did well. You will not miss by point zero 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 to the infinitum one. No one told of this. No one foretold it. No one heard any words from you. He's challenging you. Now you're talking about human beings who you are fighting and killing in behalf of the idol of yours which you claim to be God. No one told of this. No one foretold it. No one heard any words from you. I was the first to tell Zion. Look here, they are. I gave to Jerusalem a messenger of good news. I looked, but there's no one. No one among the gods to give counsel. No one to give answer when I asked them. He called them God, small gene, because they claim to be God. And he's challenging, see, they are all false. I didn't say, he said, I cannot fight you, but he can. And you can say it's hate speech, like Allah said. Yours too is a hate speech to me. If you are traumatized, I'm more traumatized than you by not believing this and proclaiming your own. It's a matter of live and let's live and let the gods, so called, fight among themselves and prove themselves who is God. You are not to fight for them. I'm not to fight for my own. Their deeds amount to nothing. Their images are but wind and confusion. Do something, whether good or bad, so that we may be dismayed and filled with fear. That's verse 23. What is the verdict? What is the verdict? That's what we are doing. We stay dealing with 14 challenging all nations. He said, you are less than nothing, and your works are utterly worthless. He who chooses you is detestable, abominable. Now we go to 15. Yahweh God, creator, giver of breath and life to all humans. That's who he is. You see what he said? He said, this is what, Isaiah 42, 5. This is what God the Lord says, the creator of the heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that spring forth from me. Who gives bread to its people and life to those who walk in it? Would you like that? Wow. The God who stretched forth the earth and who caused the earth to spring from it. Who gives bread to his people? He will, if he draws his bread, you are gone. And you have any strength in you, you have any life in you, you've been to be fighting about things who happen to be God or not. And life to those who walk in it. He wants to give you life. So better listen and repent and hold to him. He has graciously given you his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. He is not against you, but he is for you. He said, come unto me, all ye that live and have a legend, and I'll give them rest. Do you understand? He graciously immerses with you. You don't deserve it, but he loves you. I can't be loved. So much that in spite of your hostility, in spite of your filth, he paid the price for you to come home because he loves you unconditionally. Praise to Yahweh by all inhabitants of the earth. Isaiah 42, 10 to 12. What is he saying? He tried to say all the inhabitants of the earth are to praise Yahweh. You choose not to. That's your choice. And everything you choose or choose not, you are accountable for it. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise from the ends of the earth. You will go down to the sea, all that is in it, you, Alas, and all who live in them. Let the wilderness and this town raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kida lives rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. I have one of my crew called Selah sitting right in front of me. The cameraman. Let them shout from the mountain tops. 
Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. He's not yet married, so you can write me and then maybe he may be interested in you. 18. What is the effect? It's a dashing young man anyway. Dashing young man. Well learned. And, and, and humble with Christian values. Except he disappoints me. He will march as Yahweh's Shabbat. Not Shabbat. Shabbat. Sabbath is rest. Shabbat means Lord of the heavenly angelic armies. And in English, it's translated the Lord of hosts. Host is army of soldiers. The host there. That's Yahweh Shabbat. S A B B A O T H. And triumph over his enemies. As a 4230 reads, the Lord will march out like a champion, like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal with a shout. He will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemy. You are no match before him. Don't fight him. Be on his side and he will be well with you. Don't fight for the other gods you are fighting for. They even can't stand the presence of Yahweh. How much you? Funny little creature following them. 90. Yahweh can do the opposite in jet pain. We have seen that he's able to turn the desert into fertile land, to drain dry lands, into pools of water. But here he does the opposite. He dries up vegetation and rivers. So we look at Isaiah 42, 14 to 17. For a long time I've kept silent, I've kept quiet and held myself back. But now like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and grab all their vegetation. Now, all your, just like Lot did, he chose the fertile land against his uncle, Abraham. You see, it's not, it's not, Jesus said, a man's life doesn't consist of the abundance of goods he possesses. You are for money. You kill people politically. You, kill, you, see, you see what you're doing. You read the lesson. Isn't it? Look at you. And you kill people. You take their lands. You take their money. You siphon the funds of the nation. And you are cahoot with other people as a cabal. Look, God can whittle away all your money and the estate and things you are stolen. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all the vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pool. Even inanimate things like this. He can change them to the opposite and about you, pony little flesh. I will lead the blind by the way they have not known along unfamiliar paths. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, listen, some of you have not hewn up. Statues made of mortar, made of stones, made of several gold. But your marriage is your idol, isn't it? Your children, your, your job is your idol. Your money, your money. Your car, your private jet is your money. Your political position and appointment is your money, isn't it? That is your idol. But those who trust in idol will say to me, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. It does the opposite. And in Ezekiel 17, 20 to 24, he says, he makes the tall tree short and short tree tall, opposite. You get it? He dry up green trees and then make dry trees flourish. He can both kill and give life. That's what Jesus said. Don't fear those who can kill the body and then they can do nothing else with it. But fear the one who will kill the body and throw your soul also into hellfire. That is your way shall die. That's the one we talk about. The Holy One of Israel. Number 20. His absolute protection for obedient Israel. Israel. Israel means Prince of God. El is God. Prince of God. He gave them that name. And all also, all believers in Christ Jesus. So Christianity came out of Judaism. And Christianity is not for Gentiles alone. Christianity beginning at where all Jews but Peter, James, John, and Bartholomew, and all others, and Nathaniel, all were Jews. All the early disciples. After them, 
Paul and others were all Jews. The Bible was written primarily by Jews all through and through, except one or two as of apostles, and, and then the gospel according to Luke by a Gentile, that's Dr. Luke. All of this were written. Christianity is a Jewish religion. But God opened up that which was in Judaism with a new covenant so that it will engulf Gentiles as all other nations so that they become one new man according to Ephesians 2. So that they not be two, they be one. And then they are brought into it. So if you are a, 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 an Israelite or Hebrew or a Jew now and you don't put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are lost. You can be doing the whole covenant things and the like, and you'll be accepted in your community, but you will die and go to hell. You will go to heaven. So, he he is a absolute protection for obedient Israel, all believers in Christ Jesus, by extension. So, read. But that is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel. You see, only one nation on earth was established by God. He took a dead man according to the womb who was 75, had no child, with a wife, 65, had no child, they were barren, they were impotent. Then he made, he changed his name to Abraham, father of many nations, and made nation out of him. Many nations came out of him. And you see that many nations came through Ishmael, many nations came through Esau and the lies. But he took Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and with the 12 sons of Jacob, 12 tribes of Jacob, and he spread up to that. So he always he said that he formed them. He didn't select them when they were nation. He said when you took them, they were few, but few, few. It was only one man then, and one family. He took them to Egypt. By the time he came and they were many, and he established them as a nation. So he said, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the river, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flame will not set you up. He did it many times. Do you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace? No. And do you remember Daniel in, in the lion's den? You understand it. Oh, he's able. You remember Jesus passing through murderous people who wanted to kill him. They couldn't. Do you remember people who were stoned? They stoned uh, the same apostle Paul to death and this thing. He rose up again. Many things happened. And Jesus himself died on the cross, went to hell, and resurrected to pay for the penalty of our sin. He resurrected to the right hand of God the Father to make atonement for our sin. And believe in him today and confess as your Lord and Savior, you pass from death unto life. And Satan is defeated in your behalf. Can I just say amen to that? Amen. Yeah. This is just it. That is the effect of it. Say that is the effect of it. That, that is, is the effect, effect of it. Yeah. Yahweh God can do all these things. Yahweh can do the opposite in judgment. His absolute protection for like to do him in prayer. Say, dear God. Dear God. I thank you. I thank, thank you. For your uniqueness. For your uniqueness. Having true challenge. Having true challenge. To all other nation gods. To all other nation gods. We are going to see. We are going, going to see whether they can respond. Whether they can respond. You threw this challenge. You threw this challenge. Over two thousand years ago. Over two thousand years ago. Well before Jesus came. Well before Jesus came. In the generation of Isaiah. In the generation of Isaiah. There have been no spirit. There have been no spirits. No name. No name. No power. No power. No throne. No throne. That have responded. That have responded. To your challenge. To your challenge. No deity so called. No deity so called. If they could. If they could. They could have made your word. They could have made your word. Of non effect. Of non effect. But you have proved. But you have proved. That they themselves know. That they themselves know. That they are no gods. That they are no gods. Apart from you. Apart from you. You only are the creator. You only are the creator. And you only deserved. You only deserved. To be worshipped. To be worshipped. To be sacrificed to. To be sacrificed to. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Amen. 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 I want to give your life to Jesus. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I believe. I believe. You are the image. You are the image. Of the Father. Of the Father. And you are the Father. And you are the Father. Incarnated. Incarnated. To pay for our sins. To pay for our sins. On the cross. On the cross. And to reconcile us. And to reconcile us. Unto our Father. Unto our Father. I repent. I repent. And give my life to you. And give my life to you. Save me. Save me. Come into my heart. 
Come, Come into my heart. heart. Forgive my sins. Forgive my and sins. And wash it away. And wash, wash it away. away. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Now I pray for you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will be working with the same Holy Spirit who saved me more than 40 years ago. And it's been counting. It's been effective. He will do the same for you. I commend you into his son and the word of his grace. And I command that the Holy Spirit and the Holy Angels will guide you. Now that you've given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all other lords of our life will I break every curse of our life. I break as test that spirit, territorial spirit, and every fetishes over your life in the name of Jesus. They shall not have effect on you. And I break every curse over your life right now in the name of Jesus. I call it and say, Amen. Amen. God has not given us a spirit of bondage again to fear. Don't fear. They can't kill you. Even if they kill you today, you go straight unto him. Absent from the body, Paul said, present with the Lord. Now, what to do to, to four spiritual things that you should do? Exercise. Number one is the Bible. Make it your first place and feed on it every morning. And number two, pray always to God. Commit your prayers, your petition to him, your thanksgiving and worship. Your obeisance must be to him alone, your worship and sacrifice. Then number three, attend Bible believing church. Go to service, go to church meeting, join department in the church. Tell the pastor you heard a preacher on the airways and you give him your life. He will disciple you. And by then, do it always at home too and tell others about the saving power of the Lord Jesus. We have been dealing with Yahweh, Jehovah, they all are not like him. There's no God like him. He challenges all other nations God to prove whether they be God. And so have confidence in him. He will protect you from every demon activity, every satanic and luciferian societies, every spell that is cast against you. The Bible says no weapon fashion against you shall prosper. Don't be afraid. He has given you power in his name by the help of the Holy Spirit angels and the Holy Spirit to tread over serpent, over scorpion, over every power of the enemy. And nothing, absolutely nothing shall be any behind you. He holds you in your hand. You may not understand everything. It doesn't matter. Only put your trust in him. You know his word. You know who he is. It's not about you. It's about him. It's not about them, but about him. Do you understand? They fear him like something. I thank God for your life. In the name of Jesus. Until then, we'll meet again. I say, Shalom. That's the peace of God, the wholeness of God. The joy of the Holy Spirit be your portion. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us. Even now, forever. And I hear big Amen. Amen. Amen.